All right, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Merry Christmas if you're watching today. This is December 25th, 2019. Today, I want to talk about a very important concept called decentralized liquidity. So decentralized liquidity is very important. It is the very first decentralized liquidity network was invented by Bancor in 2017. And what's cool about it is it, is so congruent with the decentralized movement and it is so congruent with the satoshi blockchain or bitcoin so for those of you guys who don't know bitcoin was invented in order to have a peer-to-peer -peer currency that could exist completely online it solved problems like the double spend before the bitcoin blockchain you weren't able to send things of value over the internet instantly now we can peer-to-peer -peer. And Bitcoin is censorship resistant. It is decentralized geographically. So what that means is there are nodes all over the world, making it virtually impossible to shut Bitcoin down. And one of the big problems that Bitcoin has and proof of work blockchains just like it is that they are brilliant, but they all have one single point of failure and that's where most of the problems have come from in the past and that is exchange <laughs> big exchanges like mount gox have lost millions and we've lost billions of dollars over the years as central points of failure failure such as centralized exchanges have gone down they've had corruption they've had people run off because because what you're doing when you're putting your money on a centralized exchange is you're allowing somebody else to have your private key. So this is where all of the sort of decentralization goes out the window. And it sort of doesn't make any sense to have these censorship resistant decentralized networks if we're going to all entrust a centralized authority such as a bank or an exchange to convert our money for us if we want something else or we want a different cryptocurrency. So this is why people knew at some point, decentralized exchanges would be big. It's actually been the point of topic for the last several years. Why I am excited about Bancor and the Bancor protocol is not only do you get to hold your own private keys, which is absolutely essential for having a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, like any cryptocurrency, it needs to be censorship resistant it needs to be decentralized, but it also needs what Bancor provides, and, it, and that is its own liquidity network. Because one thing you have to understand is, in order for these cryptocurrencies to gain mass adoption, in order for these solutions to gain mass adoption, it has to be better than the old solutions. And what is a problem that the dollar or any fiat currency never has well i'll tell you it's always liquid meaning no matter where you go in the country or in the state or in your community or there's a bank or somebody somebody is willing to accept that currency in fact everybody's willing to accept that currency by law because everybody pays their taxes in that currency so the currency is always liquid that's the problem with a lot of these cryptocurrencies. That's one major problem is that not everywhere you go, people accept it. And this is the problem that Bancor has tried to solve because they believe in a multi cryptocurrency reality. So they believe in unlocking the long tail of cryptocurrencies and that there will be many multiple cryptocurrencies. So what they all need is a liquidity network that they can all tap into. And this is what we're first we're, we're finally starting to observe the maturity of the Bancor network and that's why I'm so excited and I'm making this video is because now that we've been out for 2 years we had our ICO in 2017 so really almost 3 years and we're starting to reach maturity what does this mean well on the 1st of January there's going to be an airdrop and you're going to receive the ETH BNT token. That ETH BNT token is a relay token. And inside every relay token, there is a small adjustable conversion fee 
smaller than any exchange fee that you're going to get on any centralized exchange that exists inside the relay that takes from every single exchange. And so that relay token is the beneficiary. It, it, it gets all those conversion fees inside that relay token. And so it's going to grow over time as people use the exchange. So as the ETH BNT, for example, becomes more and more popular, it will grow and grow and grow in value. So being able to get in on this ETH BNT at the ground level is very important, is very critical. And it's very cool because it is a paradigm shifter. For the first time, people will be able to provide liquidity in a decentralized manner because it's not enough just to own your own private keys you need to have liquidity for every single token and it has to be owned in a decentralized manner this will be a benefit for the entire crypto space this is a huge deal everybody owning a share of the liquidity just by default makes a cryptocurrency more stable more natural and the market less manipulated. The problem is, one of the main problems of centralization is that in order for a lot of these cryptocurrencies to become liquid, they need large amounts of capital, which usually comes from a small amount of people or whales. We call them whales in the crypto space. So what happens is you get whales who accumulate large amounts of whatever cryptocurrency, and then because of that, if they decide to sell or if they decide, you know, they want to cause some sort of manipulation, they can dump the price, buy back lower, shoot the price up whenever they want. And it's one of the things that really needs to be addressed. And the Bancor Decentralized Liquidity Network is going to allow so many small participants to make up the liquidity needed to give um, some of these cryptocurrencies, the valuations needed. So this is going to make, in my belief, everything a lot more stable, this concept of decentralized liquidity. And I can't wait to see how it affects the market in ways that are going to be hard to predict. But starting on the first, there will be a snapshot and BNT token holders will receive their portion of the ETH BNT token. And this will happen... And people will, st this will bring in so many more liquidity providers. This will bring in so many more DeFi users. And it's going to be clear to me that the growth will just continue to accelerate. People will want to become exchange token holders in other tokens, in their favorite tokens. And now, thanks to the USDB, which is Bancor's US dollar pair stable token people are going to be able to own their, their own exchange essentially that's what they're doing they're having their own exchange of whatever token they want to and whatever token they believe in and they don't have to necessarily speculate on the bank or network token or the underlying liquidity protocol they can just simply invest in the token they believe in and will have a dollar pair to sort of pair up inside the relay and that will make up for <clears throat> a lot of the impermanent loss that can occur if you have two volatile assets so there's a lot of good things going on this is super this is super exciting guys i'm excited to the max um there's so many more front ends being built on now there's grants going out all the time there's going to be more and more grants that continue to get pushed out as the token becomes inflationary. And there's going to be so many different ways that us inside the community can participate in driving protocols like Bancor and liquidity protocols yet like Bancor forward. So definitely good, definitely exciting. 2020 is looking to be very promising. One other thing I did want to mention is I published an article on the 23rd titled, um, it's, it's about Bernard Leotard and his contribution to 
the Bancorp protocol. And I wrote that article just as a sort of respecting and as a proposal to the Bancorp community because now that we are shifting from a token that is dynamic in supply, now we're going to be a fixed rate token with a government, a community governed inflation rate. It seems obvious to me that at a certain point, um, if the Bancor network continues to grow, demand for BNT tokens will also continue to grow. And whatever fixed rate we're at is going, the, the price of one BNT token could start to get to the point where it might make sense for our liquidity goals and being precise to have a smaller metric or a smaller unit of account in order to keep track. Um, you see this in Bitcoins with Satoshis, and you also see this in Ethereum with Gwai. I propose that we do the same thing in Bancor in good faith and call it the Leotard. The Leotard, an in inspiration of a financial justice warrior. So that's Bernard's name, Bernard Leotard. I, I proposed that we call it the Leotard. So that's just my proposal. I'll go ahead and link that Medium article in the description box below. You guys can give it a read. Let me know what you think. And yeah, I think that's about it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.